Hello and welcome to the second part of my video series on using fancy grounds with the suede rule set. Since part one, the suede rule set is now available to buy at the fancy grounds website and on Steam. In addition, version five of the suede rules have been released and this rule set does not currently cover those recent rule changes. The rule set will continue to evolve and improve over time. Thus, there may be subtle changes from the current version to the version I'm using when making this video. Please ask questions either here or on the SmiteWorks Discord channel or on the forums of the Fancy Grounds website where you will always find people willing and more than happy to help. If you have any suggestions for future videos, please let me know. Today we'll be showing off some of the edges and hindrances and the automation that is built into the rule set. I shall start with inventory. Bob has a D4 in all his attributes and all his skills. If we go to his inventory tab you can see he has a load limit of 20 and a currently carrying a total weight of 20. This is due to the heavy item. This is all very well if Bob makes an athletics check because he's at his load limit he is fine. However he picks up a light item, just type one in, give it a weight of one and the second we tab away you can see that Bob is now encumbered. So we make an athletics roll it was a good roll, but because of encumbrance, Bob failed. So what we're going to do is we're going to make Bob brawny. So if I click on library, I want to change the sidebar to the create PC icons, which makes it easier when you're creating PCs. So we're going to click on edges. Brawny is already selected. So I'm going to drag that in, drop it on there, go back to the inventory tab. And we can now see that even though Bob's still carrying 21 pounds of equipment, his load limit, because he's now brawny, has doubled to 40. In addition, if we were to increase Bob's strength die and come back to inventory, we can see again it has added another 20 pounds to his load limit. And if we take away his brawny edge, it will drop back down to 40. If we take the strength back down to a d4, Bob is now encumbered he gets ambushed he doesn't want to be encumbered so the easiest thing for Bob to do would be to drop the, the heavy item and now his athletics roll is no longer encumbered still with an athletics of four he still failed even with the wild die but as you can see it's quite easy and then when Bob picks stuff back up he's encumbered again if we go into the suede player's guide and bring up some edges We'll get to Power Surge. Power Surge, when you're Delta Joker, you recover 10 power points. This may not exceed your usual limit. This functionality is automatically implemented in the rule set, although the odds of getting a Joker when demonstrating this video are so random, I'm not going to try and do that here. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to open up the Combat Tracker, and we've got Craig Rankins here. And the first thing we're going to do is roll some damage. So if we open up combat, we'll roll his cavalry saber, which is a good hit. And then he rolls for some damage. Now, the seven's not bad, but may maybe he wanted an eight. Maybe, of course, he's not too happy about that one. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of his bennies. We're going to drop it on the cavalry saber. It will automatically re-roll the damage. And because he's got the No Mercy Edge, it will also add plus two to the damage. We're going to incapacitate Craig. And we incapacitate him. We get a roll on the table and he's now bleeding out. When you are bleeding out every round, you've got to make a Vigor roll with your wound penalty um, to stabilize. Because Craig has got the hard to kill edge, when we move the tracker back to him and he makes the bleeding out roll, you can see the roll is a five because the minus three penalty is ignored by the hard to kill edge. So therefore Craig is stabilized. So what we'll now do is we'll make him a little better there. We'll get rid of the bleeding out effect and we'll clear up the tracker. We are now gonna make use of one of the slash commands slash DMG. This is a very useful command if you just wanna do 2d6 damage, you type slash dmg 2d6 and it gives you two points of damage and you can see here's a little blood icon so you can just drop it on a character and you can see that in this case the Hulko has just taken a wound but we won't worry about that. It does have a nice advantage that you can fudge things 
and type in a static number. Now, it, when you drag it, you don't get the nice little wound icon, but when you drop it on a character, you can see it still does 30 points of damage in this case. And as we know, four wounds is enough to incapacitate. So if we apply that on Craig, we're into the incapacitation role. So Craig's okay, he's not bleeding out, but everything else. However, if we take these off, go back to edges, and we'll put in tough as nails onto his character sheet. Minimize that again, close his character sheet off, and I'll just reapply the same amount of damage as before, which I believe was 30 points of damage. It does help to actually type it there. So, slash DMG 30, drag and drop the damage. You can now see Craig's taken four wounds, but he's not incapacitated. So, I can apply that. We'll turn that off, and if we give him tougher the nails. So we open up his character sheet again. Uh, that's not the way to open the character sheet, that's the way. Give him tougher than nails again. As you can see there it's replaced tough as nails with tougher than nails. We'll drop that and we'll minimize that. So we need to do 34 points of damage. Drop that on his character sheet which is, uh, I can't do my sums, we'll manually roll it up to five woods by using the mouse button. Ah, nope, I know what the problem is here. I've turned on the wound cap. So if we come into one of the options, if we come down here, I've set the wound cap to limit the game to four wounds. Um, yeah, damage cap. Turn that off. So we'll drop that down. Five wounds doesn't incapacitate, six wounds does. Iron draw. Let's do some soaking. I'll open up uh, your character sheet. We'll come to here and we shall give Craig the iron jaw. So Craig's just taken six six wounds which will incapacitate him therefore on his character sheet what he would do is he'd pick up a Benny he'll drop it on the wounds. Uh, he, rolled a, he rolled a four he got a plus two for having an iron jaw which makes it a, a soak roll of six which is enough to take it down by one wound so Craig's taken five wounds but he's still standing. On the hindrance side both for beasts will reduce pace and strength accordingly and increase size and the very young hindrance or sorry young hindrance I think they've renamed it uh, will also add in the extra luck. In addition we have the level headed edge that has been in there for a while so if we re-roll the uh, cards here you can see that Nacho Sato was dealt the red joker so it gets a joker bonus and that's due to level headed so everyone basically gets jokers wild and she can choose which card she wants to use. This is useful in a chase because if the Ten of Spades had been a club and the Joker wasn't a Joker, because obviously you're always going to pick the Joker, you can pick, you can actually choose which card to, pl to play. But what we're going to do, we're going to take away her level-headed and give her another hindrance instead. So we'll come into here, go to hindrances, and we're going to find the hesitant hindrance. We'll drop the hesitant hindrance on her sheet. We'll re-roll again. And as you can see now, she was dealt two cards and she has to take the lower one because of her hesitant hindrance. The last thing I want to talk about today are effects. The effects list has been totally redone and you can see all the effects in there, which uses a sort of macro language, which will allow you to add your own, own effects on if you want to. Uh, the one to point out here is the at symbol. If you get the nap symbol that means anything, any attack against the person that effect is applied to, in that case of cover heavy, is affected to any attack will be at minus six. Whereas, not, whereas a parry plus four will just increase the parry. Stunned, distracted and vulnerable are three of the new effects obviously that come in a lot in the game. Now what you can't do is you can't just say, all oh, right, I want Craig to be stunned and hit the function key to automatically affect them. Well, you can literally drag it up and drop it on. However, you don't even need to do that because you can literally just start typing vulnerable, press tab, and the vulnerable effect is automatically applied. And then when the characters come round, the vulnerable goes and you can see there uh, Craig 
uh, made his uh, vigor roll, so he was no longer stunned, but he does count as distracted and vulnerable. And if we move around again, you can see the effects are all going away. So all very nice, well worth investigating further. Quite a few effects in there. The best thing you can do is have a play around with them. And that really covers most of the new functionality and effects I want to go over today. Uh, if you have any questions, as I said earlier, please post them in the videos. Uh, look, We'll be looking at making a video to cover the new chase rules soon. But until then, thank you very much and goodbye.